Advice from Aristotle to achieve prosperity. The component parts of a household are man and property. But to understand the nature of a household, it is most quickly seen by examining its smallest parts. According to Hesiod, it is necessary to have a house first and foremost, and then a wife, for the former is the primary condition of subsistence, and the latter is the rightful possession of all freemen. As a part of economics, we need to establish proper rules for the association of husband and wife, and this includes determining the qualities a woman ought to possess. Regarding property, the first concern is what comes naturally. In the course of nature, the art of agriculture takes precedence, followed by arts that extract products from the earth, such as mining. Agriculture ranks first due to its inherent justice, as it does not take anything away from people either with or without their consent, unlike retail trading and mercenary arts or warlike arts. Furthermore, agriculture is natural, as all beings derive their sustenance from their mother, and humans get it from the earth. Additionally, agriculture greatly contributes to bravery, as it keeps men physically fit and able to lead an outdoor life and work hard. It also makes them adventurous against foes, as farmers are the only citizens whose property lies outside the fortifications. Regarding the human aspect of the household, the primary concern is regarding a wife, as a shared life is natural for both females and males. As I have mentioned elsewhere, Nature aims to produce many forms of association, just as it produces various kinds of animals. But it is impossible for females to achieve this without males, or males without females, resulting in their shared life arising necessarily. In other animals, this interaction is not based on reason but solely on the amount of natural instinct they possess and is entirely for the purpose of procreation. However, in civilized and more intelligent animals, the bond of unity is more perfect as we observe more mutual help, goodwill, and cooperation, especially in the case of humans. The cooperation between females and males ensures not just survival but also a good life. The production of children is not only a way of serving nature but also of securing a genuine advantage. Parents invest effort in their vulnerable children when they themselves are strong and able, and this is repaid to them in old age when they become helpless, by their children who are then in their prime. At the same time, Nature periodically provides for the perpetuation of the human species since it cannot be achieved individually. Thus, the nature of both man and woman has been predetermined by the will of heaven to live a shared life. They are distinct in that the powers they possess are not always applicable to identical purposes, but their functions, in some aspects, are opposed to one another while still contributing to the same ultimate goal. Nature has made one sex stronger and the other weaker, so that the latter is more cautious due to fear while the former, with its courage, is better able to defend against attacks. Additionally, one sex may acquire possessions outside the house, while the other preserves those within. In terms of work, one sex is better suited for a sedentary life and not strong enough to endure exposure, while the other is less suitable for quiet pursuits but well adapted for outdoor activities. Concerning offspring, both sexes share in the procreation of children, but each has its particular role towards them the woman by nurturing, and the man by educating them. First and foremost, certain laws must be observed towards a wife, including the avoidance of doing her any harm, as this reduces the likelihood of the man being wronged himself. This principle is inculcated by the general law, as the Pythagoreans suggest, that one should least of all harm a wife, as she is like a suppliant seated at the hearth. Wrong inflicted by a husband includes forming connections outside his own house. As for sexual intercourse, a man should not become accustomed to not needing it at all nor be unable to rest when it is lacking, but instead, he should be content whether it is present or absent. The saying of Hesiod is a good one. A man should marry a maiden, that habits discreet he may teach her. This means that it is important for a husband and wife to have similar habits and values, as dissimilarity can lead to the destruction of affection between them. When it comes to appearance, both partners should not fake their feelings or attitudes towards each other, just as they shouldn't in their behavior. If a relationship requires such false displays, it is no better than acting on a tragic stage. In terms of possessions, the most important subject of economics is man himself. Therefore, one should first ensure good employees are acquired. Employees can be divided into two categories, overseers and workers. Education plays a significant role in shaping their character. Those entrusted with higher duties should be carefully brought up. The master's relationship with the slaves should neither allow insolence nor provoke irritation. Higher class employees should be given some level of honor, while workers should receive ample nourishment. 
Wine should rarely, if ever, be given to workers, as it can make even freemen insolent. The life of a worker revolves around work, punishment, and food. Providing only food without punishment and work can make them insolent, while giving them work and punishment without sufficient food is tyrannical and reduces their efficiency. Thus, it is necessary to provide them with both work and adequate food, as rewards are essential in ruling over workers, and their reward is their food. A good worker is neither too cowardly nor too courageous. Those who are too cowardly lack endurance, while those who are too spirited are difficult to control. It is beneficial to set a definite goal for workers and offer freedom as a prize, as they are motivated to work when a goal is set before them with a defined time limit. Workers should be bound to their service through the pledges of family, and it is best not to have too many of the same race in a household, similar to a city. The economist should possess four qualities in relation to wealth. He should be able to acquire it and safeguard it. Otherwise, acquiring wealth would be of no advantage, akin to drawing water with a sieve or a jar with a hole in it. Additionally, he should be able to manage his possessions properly and put them to good use, as these are the true purposes for which wealth is necessary. The different types of property should be distinguished, with a focus on having more productive assets than unproductive ones. Sources of income should be distributed in a way that reduces the risk of losing everything at once. To preserve wealth, it's beneficial to follow the methods used by the Persians and the Spartans. The Attic system of economy is also useful, where they sell their produce and buy what they need, eliminating the need for extensive storage in smaller households. In the Persian system, everything should be well organized, and the master should personally oversee all aspects, as Dio described about Dionysus. A man should attend to everything as much as possible himself as no one takes care of someone else's property as diligently as they do their own. Some tasks should be handled by the master, while others fall under the responsibility of his wife, each according to their designated roles in the household economy. Occasional inspections are sufficient for smaller establishments, but more frequent inspections are necessary when overseers are employed. It's important for the master to set a good example, especially when trust is placed in others, as perfect imitation is not possible unless the master is attentive. Masters should wake up earlier and go to bed later than their workers, and they should ensure the house is never left unguarded, just like a city. They must attend to tasks promptly, whether it's day or night. In some cases, a master should even rise in the still of the night, as it promotes health, wealth, and wisdom. The attic system of disposing of produce is useful for smaller estates, but on larger estates, overseers must be entrusted with managing the distinctions between yearly and monthly expenditures as well as the daily and occasional use of household items. Regular inspections should be carried out to assess what is present and what is needed. The arrangement of the house should consider the various possessions, including what is suitable for different types of produce, clothing, property, and the well-being of its inhabitants. For health and comfort, the house should be well ventilated in summer and receive adequate sunlight in winter. In large households, employing a doorkeeper to safeguard incoming and outgoing items can be beneficial. For convenient access to household items, following the Laconian method is advisable, ensuring that everything has its designated place, ready for use, and doesn't require constant searching.